I'm not all or nothing. I'm not always vegan, but I try to do like 90% of my eating is vegan. This video is gonna be all over the place because I should have just like typed myself out a script because I'm like pew, 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 pew. So I wanted to talk a little bit about why I like to eat vegan. I am a vegetarian. I don't really eat meat hardly at all. There have been a few times where I've like accidentally eaten meat, but typically I don't choose to eat meat. Pretty much everything that I cook, especially our meals, are vegan as well. There's a lot of different reasons that people choose to be vegan. There's a few different reasons for me. So first of all, I found it a lot easier to eat a lot of whole foods, like whole fruits and vegetables and seeds, and just eat more plants if I'm eating vegan. They kind of go hand in hand. It just makes it a little bit easier. A lot of people also choose to eat vegan because they don't want to eat things that have come from animals. And that was partially part of my choice. There are ways that farmers can be sustainable. Of course, there are humane ways that you can continue to eat meat, dairy, and eggs. But for me, it was easier for me to just get it out of my diet altogether. And I honestly feel a lot better when I'm eating more whole foods and less meat. Another thing is dairy doesn't really sit well with me and so I try to avoid dairy anyway and if I'm already avoiding dairy and I don't eat meat I mean what else is there eggs and I don't really eat eggs that much okay I will say <laughs> every now and then like on vacations I will have eggs Benny which I love and if you know eggs Benedict does come with ham so <laughs> occasionally I eat meat but typically in my home I don't cook meat or eat meat I think people think like, if I'm gonna go vegetarian, or if I'm gonna go vegan, I have to be all or nothing. And some people may disagree with me, but I really feel like an all or nothing approach is just setting yourself up for failure. It's really hard to just cold turkey stop eating meat if you've eaten meat your whole life. When I decided to stop eating meat, yes, it was November of last year, so November 2019, I was 29. I had been eating meat for 29 years, save for one Lent, when I decided to give up meat for Lent. <laughs> but otherwise, I had been eating meat and I actually grew up in a house that ate a lot of meat, like for every single meal. <sighs> Pause for planes. It was a hard turn for me to stop eating meat initially. And when I went home to Georgia over the holidays, I did eat meat maybe two or three times, maybe less than that. But overall, I am a vegetarian and as far as what I cook, I'm a vegan. There are some areas where I am a failed vegan. You guys, I love cheese. And the diet cheese is good, but it's not as good and not as satisfying. To me, there is nothing like a big hunk of Parmigiano Reggiano. It is my favorite cheese. I'm not talking about like the shaker Parmigiano. I'm talking about like a chunk of it. You can taste the crystals in it. The lactose count in Parmigiano Reggiano is really, really low. And I think that's why my body can tolerate it a little better. So cheese is one area where sometimes I stray a little bit. Another area that I tend to not fully be a great vegan on is, that sentence made zero sense. Let's try that again. Another failed vegan area for me is ice cream. I love ice cream. I will have dairy ice cream probably once every two weeks or so. I really like it. I really, really like ice cream. That's something I get from my me mama. <laughs> I love ice cream and I just haven't found any non-dairy ice creams that are as comforting and rich and delicious as actual dairy filled ice cream. Something that helps is when I eat ice cream, either when I eat it or as soon as I get home, I will try to take some sort of like probiotic to help my body digest that. So sometimes that is actually a probiotic and I can show you which one I use. Another thing that helps is if I drink a kombucha. I know a lot of people don't like kombucha. That's totally fine. It's kind of a hippy dippy weird thing, but I really like it and the probiotics of the kombucha help really settle my stomach. Let me show you a good night dairy ice cream and a not so good non dairy ice cream and I'll come back with the probiotic that I take so for my probiotic I take the life 9 probiotic supplement from young living I take it right before bed and it's really helpful but if I know I'm going to eat ice cream or I have just eaten ice cream with dairy in it 
I will take one of these. Delicious non-dairy ice cream, Ben and Jerry's. Their dairy-free is actually really delicious. It to me has more of like a yogurt ice cream flavor. Yeah, it kind of tastes more like frozen yogurt, the vanilla ice cream, but let's be honest, I'm just digging out the chocolate chip cookie dough chunks anyway, so <laughs> it's delicious. Other non-dairy people may disagree. <laughs> but I picked this up at the grocery store a couple weeks ago and I tried it thinking I was gonna like it. I guess it's more of like a sherbet. Ooh, I did not like it. So this is Snow Monkey Passion Fruit Dairy Free Ice Cream. I think my hang up with this is the sunflower butter because my taste buds can pick it out. Like my taste buds taste sunflower, not delicious, yummy ice cream. So it's not my favorite. <laughs> In fact, I've been trying to find a friend to bum it off on, but it is vegan. It is nut-free, dairy-free, 20 grams of protein per pint, paleo and gluten-free. So it kind of fits a lot of categories, but taste-wise, it's just not for me. When it is so hot like this, I try to avoid turning on the oven and the stove top. And so this week I decided that I would cook three vegan meals all for my Instant Pot and I just wanted to bring you guys along because I know a lot of people think about eating vegan or even eating vegetarian and they're like, that's really difficult, that's really unattainable, you probably have to buy all this extra stuff and all these extra ingredients when really we have found it's not much more expensive. Our grocery bill is about the same when we were eating meat on a regular basis and when we're not. We're eating actually more whole foods and more plant-based foods. Our grocery bill is really similar, really about the same. It is tricky. It's hard when you're starting to eat vegan or eat vegetarian because you are having to learn something completely new. And I didn't start this until I was 29. So all of the recipes that I'd used to figure out how to tweak them so that they could work without meat and without dairy and without animal products. I'm not all or nothing. I'm not always vegan but I try to do like 90% of my eating is vegan. So I've been editing this video and I'm realizing that it's 20 minutes long and I haven't even gotten to the recipes yet. So I think I'm going to split this video into three parts. The first one will be why I have chosen to be almost always vegan and the second will be my vegan grocery haul from this week and then the third will be the three recipes so thank you guys for being patient as i'm learning through this if you liked this video then i would love for you to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you like this video or if you like other videos that we've posted that you've watched i would also love it if you would share it with a friend or leave us a comment as of right now we have 199 subscribers on our youtube channel i literally never thought that we would even have 100 people who subscribe to our channel so it's really cool to have almost 200. If you're watching this and you're not subscribed, it would be awesome if you could subscribe to this channel just to bump us up to 200. Also, let me know in the comments what I could do to celebrate having 200 subscribers. If you have any ideas, just drop me a comment. We'll figure out a way to celebrate. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.